This is Mrs. Murphy and today I'm going to take you through a couple of SQL queries. I'm going through the code in the SQL student database example listed in Canvas. In this we have, we're just having some data here and it's normalized into three tables. I have a student table, a schedule table, and a courses I table. So the code I'm copying is just this code right here that creates the tables. And I'm going to paste it into the online interpreter so we can kind of show you what's going on. So in this, I have a couple of commands that you normally wouldn't use. If you create a table and then create another table with the exact same name, it gives you an error. So I have a couple of drop tables, and all that just means is delete these tables if they exist. And when you do a database, you normally don't delete the tables every time you query the database. But to keep things simple in this class, we're, that's what we're doing. So I have some code to create the student's table. And then I have a, a W number and a first name and a last name and a birth year. And the first three are, are text, so I say varchar. And then the birth year is a number, since you're born in like 1950s or whatever year you're born in, it's still a number. Then I specify which is the primary key, in this case the W number. Then when I insert the information, <coughs> I have to insert it in the same order that the table was created. So here I have W number, first name, last name, birth year. I have to have the W number, the first name, the last name, and the birth year. Then I have the courses table, which is set up in a very similar fashion. The course ID, which is an int, and then the class and the teacher with the primary key specified. Then I, I have a couple of insert statements to insert the data into that particular table. And then the last is the schedule table. This one's a little bit different. I have a primary key set specified, but it's a composite key. So the W number and course ID together create the primary key. Then I have a couple of foreign keys. The W number references the W number in the student's table, and the course ID in this table references the courses ID and the course ID in the courses table. Okay, so we're going to try out our first basic SQL statement. It's a select statement. I'm going to say select star from students. So if I hit execute, it's going to show me all of the students in the, that are in the student table. Now I can switch that. I can limit the number of columns. Maybe I just want to see the first name and the last name. So what that's going to show me is it's not going to show me their W number or whatever it is. It's just going to show me their first and last name. And we can switch that around. Suppose we want the last name to show first. I could say select net last name, first name. And that's going to switch the order. It's going to show the last name, then the first name. Okay, I'm going to switch this back to star. And then this right here is what specifies which table. So I could say select star from courses, if I could spell courses correctly. And if I execute, that's going to now show me everything in the courses table. Okay, so I'm going to just take and I'm going to select the teacher from the courses table. Now it's just limiting the number of columns. Okay, we're going to do this a little bit differently now. I'm going to see if we have duplicates teachers because the teachers teach multiple classes. I can say select distinct. And what that will do is it will just, uh, if I could spell distinct correctly. There we go. Miss that. Okay, so select distinct. Um, limits it so there's not duplicates among the results. Now I just have unique fields. There's also an order by which lets you put it in a particular order. If I want to order this by the teacher, since all that's there is the teachers, I can say order by teacher, and it will order it based upon the teacher. So now it's in alphabetical order according to the teacher. Okay, so now I've got, I've shown you how to limit the number of columns. I've showed you how to limit the number of rows just with the select distinct. But you can specify. Let's show you the, we're in courses right now. And I'm going to switch this back to a select star. And I'm going to get rid of this order by just so we can keep things simple. What if I only want to see the CS1030 class? So I'm going to say select star from courses where cl 
class equals CS1030. Okay, so in this situation, I have the select star from courses, that's my basic query, Th and I'm limiting it by saying where the class is CS1030. Now notice I have this in single quotes. I have it in single quotes because the class is a varchar, and so the C the, this means it's text. So now it's going to just show you there's all the teachers that teach the CS1030. I want to show you an int one now. And let's do this. I'm going to show you a select star from the students table uh, where birth year is equal to, um, what's a good year to be born in? 1985. Since this is a year, and since year is an int, there's int, um, I don't put it in single quotes because it's not text. All right. So anytime it's text uh, or varchar, you put it in single quotes. Anytime it's not, you put it in, you just leave it out. All right. So now you can also do, here we have equal. You can do greater than, less than. So here I'm going to say greater than 1985, and it's going to give me all that. And there's no one born. Let's greater than 1985. Let's limit that. Let's go 1900 because I think there's a, a few people there. So now I got a few people in my class that were born uh, after the year 1900. Um, I can use do less than if I wanted to. There's my less than or less than and equal to. There's less than or equal to by putting less than or equal to. Okay, now if you want to do a particular range, you can use the and operator. So I could say I'm going to go um, greater than 1900 and birth year is less than um, 2000. So it's going to give me all the people that were born between that particular range with the and clause. Uh, there's also an OR clause. Let's do something with an OR clause. We're going to select star from courses where class equals CS1030 or class equals CS1400. That way I can view both of those classes, but not all the information from the database. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is a join, because you can query information from multiple tables. Um, in this situation, I'm going to get just their first name, their last name, their class, and their teacher. But I'm going to get that information from the students, the courses, and the schedule table. Now, I have to limit it a little bit, because it will show you everything with every table. So I'm going to specify where the students table, the student's W number matches up with the scheduled W number, and the course's ID number matches up with the scheduled ID. And I'm ordering it first by class, then by teacher. So if I execute this, I'm seeing information from multiple tables now. Now in your assignments, you're not required to do a join. I just wanted to show you that it is possible because that's how they get this information from s all these different tables, is by joining them in different ways. Okay, well, I hope this has helped you get ready for your homework assignment. You're welcome to start with this as your base and just kind of modify it to m meet your criteria and your needs. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Also, you can email me your code, and I can take a look and see if you're getting any errors, weird errors or anything like that.